Old vs New, The Battle of the Six Cores. Today I compared a 3930K vs an 8700K. Why did I do it? Because I have both of them and I can. Now, the test setup. For the newer bench I used an i7-8700K, I deleted it and overclocked it to 4.8GHz on all cores, an ASRock Z370 Extreme 4 socket 1151, 32GB of DDR4 at 2666 in dual channel, with an effective bandwidth of 42.66GB per second. That is calculated by multiplying the clock speed by 64 and then by the number of channels. So in this case 2666, that's the clock speed, times 64 times 2 because we're running in dual channel, which gives us 341,248 bits per second. We'll divide by 8 to convert to bytes and then step it up to megabytes, which is 42,000 656 megabytes per second, which makes it 42.66 gigabytes per second. The older bench is using an i7-3930K, that one is soldered, so no need to delete it, on an MSI X79 socket 2011 motherboard. 64 gigabytes of DDR3-1333 in a quad-channel configuration. Since this is in a quad-channel configuration, the calculation needs to be adjusted this time. We use the clock speed, times 64, but this time times 4, because we're using 4 channels which is 1333 times 64 times 4, which is 341,248. Again, converting to megabytes per second, that's 42,656 megabytes per second, so 42.66 gigabytes per second, which means both of the test setups had the same memory bandwidth. For both benches, a GTX 1070 with an Arctic Accelero but no overclock was used. That doesn't really matter since all the tests I ran were CPU tests only. All results were taken from an average of 3. The tests I ran were Firestrike Custom, at CPU only, Cinebench R15 multi-core and single core, and the 7-zip built-in benchmark. I measured the power draw for Cinebench multi-core, and I'll get to that later. For Firestrike I created a custom run and only tested for the CPU score. In this test the 3930K performed the worst, with 12,347 points. Once overclocked, it got closer to the stock 8700K with a 33% improvement in score. The stock 8700K still beat the overclocked 3930K by 9% with a score of 17,867. Once overclocked, it increased our score by 7% to 19,158. I was quite surprised that even the overclocked 3930K was actually slower than the 8700K stock. Now for Cinebench R15. I did not test for OpenGL since that is not the point of this test. And in the CPU scores again we saw the 3930K being behind all the others with 900 multicore and 133 single core. The stock 8700K had a massive 50% lead in multicore performance and 28% in single core over the 3930K. Overclocking the 3930K boosted its score by 32%, increasing its score to 1192 and 162. That still left it behind the stock 8700K by 12%, with the 8700K being at 1350 and 167. Once overclocked it reached scores of 1495 and 206. Here again the overclocked 3930K was slower than the stock 8700K. Now for 7-zip. Decompression benchmarks first. The 7-zip score is measured in MIPS, that stands for Million Instructions Per Second. The stock 3930K scored 38829. Overclocking gained us a 33% improvement in score, increasing it to 51,715. And again, the stock 8700K was still ahead of the 3930K overclocked with a score of 54,734. Once overclocked, the 8700K gained another 10% of performance, increasing its score to 59,998, which made it win over the stock and overclocked 3930K by 40% and 16% respectively. For compression, the 3930K with no overclock managed to get 30,238. Once overclocked, that increased to 36,999, which is a 22% performance boost over stock. An 8700K without an overclock still managed to outperform it with a score of 39,335. Overclocking increased our score by 11%, increasing it to 43,749. And here again, the overclocked 3930K was slower than the stock 8700K. I'm starting to notice a pattern. Now for power draw. Power draw was measured from the wall, so total system consumption is listed here. And finally, we see the 3930K win at something for the first time, with 186 watts pulled under load and 60 watts in idle. 
Once overclocked, well, the tables turned on it. It quickly became the worst on the chart, with 320 watts under load and 150 watts in idle. That is a 72% increase in power draw. On the other hand, overclocking the 8700K only made a 6% difference, increasing its power draw under stress from 228 watts to 242 watts, and its idle power draw from 104 watts to 112 watts. And for the final chart in the video, performance per watt in Cinebench R15. So that is how many points the CPU scored per watt consumed, obviously still measured in total system consumption. The 3930K scored 4.84 points per watt in Cinebench. Once overclocked, it dropped the performance per watt by 23%, resulting in only 3.73 points per watt. Overclocking the 8700K increased the performance per watt by 4.4%, raising its score from 5.92 to 6.18 points per watt. In conclusion then, the 3930K is older, and while it is still a 6-core CPU, it does lose to the quite surprising efficiency of an 8700K. I thought an overclocked 3930K would beat a stock 8700K, but it does not. Overclocking the 3930K even decreased its performance per watt, while overclocking the 8700K increased the performance per watt, which was quite surprising to me. And while the 3930K did in fact lose to the 8700K, it would probably still outperform things like even a 7700K in my test. The 7700K would probably still win in single core tasks like Cinebench single core tests or extreme examples like Armor 3. But again, the 3930K, since it does have six cores, would maybe even pull ahead in modern games like Assassin's Creed Origins, since that is actually kind of good at using all the threads it can get. So if you can get a used 3930K for cheap, I do actually still highly recommend them. I use them in my streaming PC and I do have to say the performance is still very, very good especially for multi-threaded workloads, like streaming. So that's it for this time. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.